Now, what a big game it is at the weekend. Arsenal against Manchester City. It doesn't get bigger, really, does it? Especially when we're looking at the title race. And uh, it's funny, isn't it? The the two results, I think, for those two clubs in midweek have completely changed the complexion of how this fixture looks because you've got Arsenal who've come into it off the back of losing to Lon. They might have an injury for Bukayo Saka as well. We'll talk about how important that is in just a moment. But I think that was a very big win for Manchester City against Leipzig. Mm on Wednesday, given the fact they'd gone out of the League Cup to Newcastle, they'd lost to Wolves in the league. And if they'd headed into that game off the back of three defeats, which it very easily could have been, Leipzig are the best team in their group, that would have been quite worrying, wouldn't it, going into that game against Arsenal? Yeah, I think I think so. But do you, do you know, when we think about this game, often football needs to be seen in context, right? So you need to talk about what happened previously, you need to have a look at um, the form teams are in and whatever else. Some games, however, I think that they're just so big that form is totally irrelevant. And this is that, not necessarily for Manchester City. Don't get me wrong, I think Manchester City need to win and I think that they will win. But I also believe that Arsenal, if they have genuine title aspirations, they must win this fixture. Non-negotiably, they must beat Manchester City, not only because they need the three points. The fixture against Manchester City for Arsenal is so much bigger than the three points. It's so much more significant because whenever they've needed to win against Manchester City... They haven't. They've capitulated. And sometimes the head-to-head is what matters. It, yeah. They just can't... They just cannot beat them. Three times they tried last year and three times they got slapped. Mm. Yeah, it's so psychological as well, isn't it? Now, how are they going to deal, Rory, with this situation with Bukayo Saka? Now, he's in the England squad, mm. which makes you think, is the injury as bad as we first thought? But if he doesn't play, I mean, how would you do it? How would you set up that team? Because... He's played, I think I think I heard a stat the other day that I think he's played over 80 games mm. in a row for Arsenal. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. He's a sensational player. He's a, a talisman. He's a mercurial footballer and he's also the he's also the, the personality of that team, isn't he? Mm. You know, if if you think about Arsenal, you kind of think Saka. He's so linked to that club, obviously from London. He's been at the club since he was a kid and I think he's probably most Arsenal fans' favourite player. Mm. So him not being available is huge. But that's the point. That's why Mikel Arteta has regularly spoken about having two players per position. Mm. That's why they recently went out and signed David Rea when they already had an excellent goalkeeper in Aaron Ramsdale because he wants two players per position for this precise reason. Mm. But Kyle Saka is injured. Okay, great. You've got Kai Havertz at the club. You've got Leandro Trossard at the club. You've got Gabriel Martinelli at the club. You've got Eddie Nketiah at the club. You've got uh, Gabriel Jesus at the club. So you have, okay, there are other injuries. But the point of your forward line being as deep as I've just laid out is for precisely this reason, to mm. find a way. And that is what they need to do here. Because, yeah. like, Ollie, do you know what? When, this is what's slightly frustrating. Not you specifically, but I think the narrative around this fixture is Saka's out, how will Arsenal cope? Rodri's out, De Bruyne's out. We're not even for one second saying, well, you know, suddenly suddenly it would be a good point for Man City. Whereas mm. we're, we're immediately saying... But doesn't oh, that, that that almost proves a point, though, about the strength and depth that Manchester City have got, though? That's the, that's the whole point here, because actually when you look at it, you mentioned a few names there. Trossard, OK, he's more of a left-sided player. Yes, he can play through mm. the middle, but then you've got Jesus, prefers to be out on the left. Mm. Then you've got Havertz, who he's liking to play in midfield and hasn't, let's be honest, I know he scored a penalty last week, but hasn't had the best start. Mm. So who does actually start on that right-hand side? Is it Reese Nelson? That's what I mean. Because with Manchester City, yes, those players are out. But you can bring in other players no, but, th- but for them that, that are on a higher can. level of Reese Nelson. And that's nothing against Reese Nelson. I think he's a very good player. And, I, and I, actually, I'd love to see him have a chance in this game. But part of the reason that Manchester City have so many options is because Pep Guardiola evolved his squad to, to create a midfielder that didn't exist. You know, he made John Stones an option for that position because he he redefined who he is. That's excellent management. So when you think of the players that are available to Mikel Arteta, OK, there may not be the obvious direct replacement. What they don't have is they don't have Arjun Robben and Damian Duff in the same squad. They mm. don't have that Ashley Cole and Wayne Bridge in the same squad. They don't have that. But they certainly have enough forward-thinking, attacking, flair, elite-level footballers to make this work. Yeah. And that is the responsibility of Mikel Arteta. Yeah, it's a good point because uh, I think that's also the way that he's recruited as well. Even if you look at some of the other signings like Yuri and Timber, he, he knew that this was a player that could play at full-back but also centre-back exactly. uh, and also in midfield as well. So I do get your point. It's just mean, I just think that right-hand side is an area where because of the quality of Saka, mm. that really... 
that does bring Arsenal down. No, it a does. Lot in it that does. Game. But I'd say that. Do you think this is a fair statement? Rodri is the most important player in the Manchester City squad. I think that's bang on. Okay, fine. So yeah. they're both without their talisman. They're key they're players, both yeah. And then if it's not, by the way, if it's not um, Rodri, say you challenge that, which you wouldn't be wrong to do, but say you did challenge it, you would have probably concluded it was Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. Okay, and so they're fine. both out. So they're both out. Mm. So let's not focus on why Arsenal won't win the game. There are, there are no excuses here. Mm. Arsenal need to do what champions do. And do you know what that is? Do you know what that quality is? Sometimes it's beating teams 5-0 and playing beautiful football and playing this expansive game or whatever. Other times, to be champions, you need to simply find a way. Just you, just come up with the answer. Have you seen enough from Arsenal this season to think that that is the case and they and they no. can beat Man City? No, I'm really shocked, actually. I predicted Arsenal to win the league. Yeah, you massively backed them. Yeah. I, I was so impressed with what they did last season. Mm. I thought they were sensational last season. I really did. I thought Mikel Arteta got so much right. And there were a few moments that were that were sort of like earth shattering because I didn't want it to happen for me. But I was full of admiration for what I was witnessing. I thought that Arsenal were at times majestic. At times they were breathtakingly good. The the result that I think hit me really hard. Chelsea played them at Stamford Bridge. They we, they beat us home and away. They beat us three one away, which sounds like a bigger scoreline. But they beat us one 0 at Stamford Bridge. Mm. But they were so good, Ollie. Yeah, like, Gab- we couldn't get was the ball. Gabriel scored the winner. Gabriel, I think, yeah. and it was they they were so good. It was it was billed actually wrongly as Obama Yang being back for Chelsea and whatever. I mean, he didn't touch the ball. It was embarrassing. Yeah. They were so good that day, and I thought it was a it was a team of title winners. They looked mm. like a team that could win the league. Going to Stamford Bridge, playing us off the park, bullying us, stopping us touching the ball. I thought, okay, this this team are, are serious. Then there was a, a moment when, in the title running, when it really mattered, when the results mean so much, and it's so much bigger than three points, you're making a statement every week. Mm. They had the cheat to go 2-0 up at Anfield. I was like, what were they doing? This is Arsenal. Awesome. <laughs> like, they're 2-0 up at Anfield. Mm. A team that we've spoken about having a week under. And they've got a horrendous up. record there. As horrendous well, record there. Yeah. And, and it's Anfield. Mm. Regardless of context, it's Anfield. So, the, I saw enough last season to genuinely believe that they could have won the league. Okay, it didn't mm. go their way. But I thought this year they will come back even stronger. And I've seen a vulnerability in them that I didn't think would exist. In what sense? So what do you mean when you say that you've seen this well, I think vulnerable a, side? I think there's a vulnerability in, in terms of the results. So drawing at home to Fulham is, is completely unacceptable mm. if you're them. To, to be where they want to be, yeah. you, can't, you can't do that. Um, the other thing is, I just don't think they've played very well. I haven't really seen them play very well. Combine that with the fact that part of Mikel Arteta's brilliance last year was that his new signings were excellent. All of the players that he brought in were... Well, I mean, they, they they hit the ground running to a ridiculous level, didn't they? Mm. Gabriel Jesus was was masterful earlier in the season. Bringing Saliba back looked like a masterstroke, allowing him to stay in France for that additional year. Yeah. Again, tapped into um, Mikel Arteta getting it right. They got know, so- it hasn't quite clipped this. No, it yet, hasn't. Has it? And this is why I think... Look I think that's why this game becomes even more important than that, because I feel like if they get that win... I thought it would start to click properly once they beat Manchester United. And I know that... You can look at Manchester United right now and and say, well, that's that's an, quite an easy three points at the moment, mm. really, isn't it? But I felt with the manner in which they won yeah, that last game, last minute winner against Manchester you, you United off the back of riding their luck. And listen, you know, they have also come into this game on the back of a four 0 win over Bournemouth as well. But I feel like that loss in the week did show those signs, as you said, of, of vulnerability. They're, they're a vulnerable as well. team. Yeah. You shouldn't be going to Lons and losing. Mm. Like you just you just shouldn't. If you're Arsenal, you should not be going to Lons and losing. Like it's. If you think about the teams that that would play in the Premier League, so many of them would beat Lons. Yeah. Like, I don't mean yeah. that to be disrespectful or whatever, but you know when you think about the players that are available to other Premier League teams? They're not, they're not available to Lons. So mm. the fact that they've gone over there and lost in the manner that they lost, think about the results that they've already struggled in this season. The Fulham game really does, like, resonate with me for being something that is unacceptable. And if you think now, to win the league... What do you think? Realistically, 90 is your minimum? Yeah. Minimum. I just don't see this Arsenal team managing to accrue that. What I think could happen is if Liverpool and if Liverpool and Man City both make a pig's ear of it and you can win the league with maybe 86, I think Arsenal might be able to do it. But I just don't see that happening. Mm, just very quickly, would Chelsea beat Lons, do you think? Oh, mate, have you seen us lately? <laughs> have you seen us? Have you seen us the way that we've destroyed Fulham? <laughs> 
Mate, we are elite. We are, we are, I can't oh, remember the last time we dreaming, conceded mate. a goal. You're dreaming. Lonza, Lonza unbelievable. <laughs> uh, it should be an amazing game, shouldn't it, on Sunday. Uh, Arsenal against Manchester City. Cannot wait for that one. We'll keep you across it on TalkSport. Of course, this is The Social on TalkSport 2. Coming up next, we'll have more build-up to the weekend's action. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.